Hey guys, welcome back to the Linux Essentials series for hackers. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to use Tor and proxy chains in conjunction to anonymize your traffic, uh, you know, through the use of any tool that you want. So both of these tools don't come pre-installed on, uh, you know, standard distributions, but you can pretty much find them on uh, pen testing and offensive distributions. Uh, so again, uh, what we need to do is install the Tor service first, not the Tor browser, but the actual Tor service. And then secondly, we need to install the proxy chains uh, tool. So again, uh, to install the Tor service, all we need to do is say sudo, um, sudo apt. You can use whatever package manager you're using, sudo apt get install. And it's pretty much going to be uh, just Tor. That'll be the name of the service. And I already have it installed. So uh, again, uh, if you just want to check what it is, so you can say, what is Tor? And this is uh, referring to the actual um, to, to the actual service. So you can see that what is tells us a second generation onion router. Uh, so if we say man uh, Tor and we hit enter, you can see that Tor uh, is a connection oriented anonymizing communication service. Users uh, choose a source routed path through a set of nodes. Uh, and negotiate a virtual circuit through the uh, through the network. I think I've pretty much explained this before in previous video as to how the Tor how Tor works. Um, so we'll be using Tor now uh, to start the Tor service. We can use systemd, or you can also use a service. Um, so we can say sudo system uh, control, and uh, we say uh, we can say start, and then we are looking for Tor. Um, I think we're, it is the Tor service here. Uh, I'm not too sure what it is, uh, what it's called. So if we say Tor, uh, and let, let's check the status here. Status Tor, and you can see that we currently have it uh, loaded and active. So again, uh, the Tor service is an on anonymizing overlay network for TCP. So uh, if we use netstat here, so we can say netstat, then we can look for listening uh, TCP connections, and we grep for the port that the Tor service connects through, which is 9050, and we hit enter. You can see we now have, uh, you know, we are listening on port 9050, and this is localhost, so that's perfect. We can use this with proxy chains. All right, so now let's talk about proxy chains. So again, uh, installing proxy chains is very simple. So you do have to get install proxy chains, uh, sorry, um, proxy chains, and we hit enter, and I already have it installed. Uh, before we actually use it, we now need to uh, we need to play around with the configuration file so that we can tweak the uh, the configuration to what we want it to be and how we want it to work. So we can say sudo vim etc proxychains.conf and we hit enter. Um, so again, uh, pretty much I'll I'll go through the settings that I use. Uh, so again, we can use HTTP SOX4, SOX5. Uh, and again, we, this allows you to tunnel um, or proxy. Uh, you can you can essentially tunnel your connections through a series of proxies. And in our case, the proxies are going to be is going to be Tor. So um, with DNS, that's the great thing. So uh, the options below identify how the proxy list is treated. Only one option should be comment, uh, uncommented at a time. So dynamic chains uh, where each connection will be done via chained proxies. All proxies chained in order as they appear in the list. At least one proxy must be online to play in the chain. I, I pretty much like using the random chain. Uh, so you can see that uh, each connection will be done via random proxy or uh, proxy chain from the list. This option is good to test your intrusion detection system because it, it's constantly changing, uh, you know, through random uh, proxies. But if again, if you want a dynamic chain, that's perfect. Uh, you can also use the strict chain. This will ensure that uh, all connection uh, are going to be done through a chain proxy or uh, all proxies will be chained in the order as they appear in the list. So I like using a random chain. So you want to uncomment this or it will be commented here. So uh, if I just uh, hit insert here and uh, it will pretty much be commented like so and you want to uncomment this. Uh, we then want to take a look at the proxy DNS uh, request. So again, this will uh, prevent no leak uh, for DNS data. This is very important. You want to make sure that's uncommented. And then uh, we want to take a look at the proxy list format. So this gives you an idea of how to use your proxy list if you are uh, interested in using other proxies apart from Tor. Uh, you can see that we have SOX5, HTTP, SOX4. In our, in our case, the defaults will be set to Tor and we want to add SOX5 as well here. So we say SOX5 and we can we remember it's running on our local host, uh, sorry, 127.0.0.1, uh, 9050. And that's, of course, going to be um, that's going to be SOX5. All right. So uh, we can add any of the other proxies we want here. So again, if you're not keen on using Tor, you can change this and we'll write changes and quit from here. Uh, so now when using proxy chains, you want to ensure that you have the Tor service started and it's currently running. 
and then I use the syntax is very simple so we say proxy chains um, and then we specify the tool that we want to use um, so for example I can say pr proxy chains are Firefox uh, or I can use another tool like SSH or Telnet uh, or I could use a tool uh, maybe let, let's try Firefox because it's the easiest way to test this so I say Firefox and then I open this website DNS uh, leaktest.com and we hit enter and that's going to start proxy chains for us now given that it's using Tor the connection is going to be uh, much slower than you know a standard proxy uh, of course, depending on what proxy you end up using. So we'll just wait for this to load up and dnslicktest.com uh, will tell us what our IP is. And secondly, it will tell us um, what our DNS is. So you can see uh, it gives us information regarding our IP. Um, for some reason, it isn't telling us what country it is. So again, we can just hit a standard test. This will test our DNS to see if we're, if, uh, we're leaking any DNS information. And of course, DNS information is very important as it can leak your geographical information. So again, uh, you can just go through the test and uh, this will display whether or not uh, what, what DNS servers you're currently been using. So let's uh, wait for this and see what results we get. There's a progress bar right over here. So you can see that all are going through um, DNS servers in Germany. And of course, uh, you have their host names and their various IPs. So again, that's uh, great because it was uh, we were we didn't uh, leak any of our personal DNS uh, information that or the DNS servers we went through. But of course, that uh, is also dependent on uh, on you know DNS security, something that's out of the scope of this video. Uh, but that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, that's all I wanted to cover, and uh, I'll be seeing you in the next video.